really, really try and immerse yourself in that feeling. You know, what is it you're doing? What are you wearing? Where are you? What are the senses around you? So now take a moment to take yourself back to a time when you felt free creatively. What is it that you're doing? How does it feel? What's going through your mind? How did it make you feel within yourself? What was it that you were doing before you started creating? And what led you into that state? Really try and immerse yourself in that feeling. What are you wearing? Where are you? What does it sound like? What does it smell like? and open your eyes felt like i was on the you know doing the headspace app or something <laughs> um yeah so hopefully think of that feeling um keep it in the back of your mind we might come back to it um and we've got i guess a qu first question maybe that those two exercises helped but what is creativity to you um anyone want to kick start us off well i, I think you should let ahmed uh, tweet you start off the wall in emoji people have spoken your, your voice says come on that, that made it even <laughs> Um, I just want to acknowledge that Ahmed is a comedian, but like he's a graphic artist by day and a comedian by night. That's his career outlet. <laughs> yeah, imposter syndrome kicking in. But yeah. Um, <laughs> wallahi, creativity to me, first of all, I don't consider myself creative as what the term means, but I can... Yeah, I mean, to me, this is something recent. I started from uh, lockdown last year. Um, I got into art, making art or illustrations or whatever you call it. And um, I found it therapeutic for me, like especially during that period when everyone's just locked down and there's nothing to do. It's just some skill that I always wanted to learn and I found the time to learn it. And yeah, every time I do it or every time I do something new it just it's like therapy it's like how some people journals how some people exercise for me whenever I do this it just relaxes me so I guess creativity to me is um I, I link it to something that um relaxes me if that makes sense 
so it's it's not necessarily it's not necessarily kind of outcome outcome based it's sort of uh you know process and path based you're enjoying that thing that you're doing and then if something comes out of it it's kind of a you know mm -hmm. beneficial byproduct okay and it's interesting i mean so you're saying do you think you're creative but you're not a creative yes that's that's the way of putting it yeah i mean yeah i think that's the best way to put it yeah okay did did that reson did anything ahmed said resonate with anyone that wants to chime in Yeah, I mean, just to add on, uh, add on to that, like I agree with him, it's, um, it's not so much uh, outcome based, but I think it's also, I think creativity can be lots of things. It doesn't have to necessarily be what we traditionally kind of uh, associate with creativity, like in terms of paintings and, and kind of visual arts. But I think storytelling, even uh, when you go to things like journalism, which you probably wouldn't look at uh, most of the time as creativity, I think as long as you can find a new way of kind of approaching something, whatever it is, and you enjoy it, I think that could be considered creativity. Mm. I completely agree. I was talking to Moji and I think every career has a form of creativity. Doctors are fact-based, but when they come into actually executing stuff, that also requires a certain element of creativity in it and how they deal with specific patients and specific surgeries. Um, so I think, yeah, you made a good point. Journalists, how they get their words across to affect people. It's the same way how an artist can make a painting affect someone um, from within. So that's a really good point. And I actually, um, just like you said, doctors, like here in, in Bergen in Norway, for example, last year, I think, or the year before that, there was a Sudanese doctor, actually, a dentist, uh, together with uh, a Norwegian uh, doctor. They were, they did like an art project based on, uh, they were explaining ca a cancer through art. And that was very interesting. It's a very interesting example of just that, like they, exa they made um, a, a short movie a short film and um, had artists come and paint and it kind of uh, it was the whole project was about science and cancer but it was through art so I think like you said you can channel creativity through anything really and does anyone want to try and like define creativity I, I feel like why had you started saying like you know something a new way of approaching something um yeah, or or Zina, if you want to expand on your point that you made in the comments, which I think was really really nice. I don't I don't know. I just feel like um, just as of last year, the pandemic, I've really immersed myself into like creative Instagram culture, but it can also be very toxic to an extent because I feel like when we think of creativity as an extent. I think about it from a very linear white perspective of like, you gotta be hipsy dipsy from Brooklyn, like very like, you know, painting murals or whatever might be the extent. But I feel like through times and being in a lot of interactive circles as these, I've seen creativity exude in different ways and different, in different flavors. And subhanAllah, I think like, I think it, in my opinion, it really definitely has been romanticized because if you're if literally, if you just wake up in the morning and do your, do your daily vicar, I think, I think of that as creativity to an extent or make your daily vicar or whatever it might be. I think that can even be shown as creativity. I don't think creativity has a, has a defined, like defined parameters or a certain like box that it should be put into, in my opinion. That's an interesting point. I think as well, like it kind of goes back to this whole like people might accept that they are creative you know, like they have those you know characteristics but then often maybe there's this like you know monopolization of what a creative looks like so then a lot of people kind of go I'm not you know a hipster in Brooklyn so I can't be a creative or I'm not you know a turtle neck wearing architect you know so I'm not I'm not a creative right um but yeah, it's an interesting one. If anyone else has any thoughts they want to add? Yeah, 
Yeah, I think when you, uh, uh, like the meditation session, when you uh, you put it that life can get from you. Uh, yeah, like I felt like at first, like I didn't have like a creative thing to think of or like a creative moment that I had. And then like the first thing that sort of popped in my mind was, you know, like as a student, like having uh, a creative way, like writing notes or like uh, approaching a problem or, you know, things like that. So like um, just like adding to what you guys said, I feel like creativity doesn't have to be like what people are used to think, think of. Like it doesn't really have to be like painting or, you know, poetry, like, you know, a lot of things. So yeah, I just wanted to add that. Yeah, that's that's a great point. That's a great point. Um, and I think it's kind of, it links with sort of, yeah, anybody can be creative. Maybe creativity is just, you know, using the knowledge that you have and your life experience, um, you know, and your skills just in an everyday kind of way. Maybe it's, it's that ordinary. <laughs> Um, okay, I think we're going to move on to the next question. So, um, when and where do you feel the most free or most yourself? Seba, I'm going to pick on you for this one. Is it the stage? Um, for me, it's not actually the stage. I was going to say it's me making music and like recording music and like doing my covers and stuff. Because, um, so like recently, me and my friend, like we have a bunch of really, really talented music. When you're surrounded by that same creative energy, you just feel like you can do whatever you want and you can create whatever music you want to create. Even if it doesn't sound too good at the beginning, you know, no one's judging you because it's just like trial and error and you're just like doing what makes like what feels right. So I have a friend and he'll be working on like the beat and the sample and stuff. And then I'll hear something that might sound good and I can just throw it in. And if they don't like it, we're like, nah, like they're straight up with you. You can be, I feel like the most safe creatively there because I feel like everyone has their own, has the same like drive and has that same creativity and same work. So we, this is like a really recent thing that I started doing as well. Um, and I just like, that's the one place where I feel the most safe, especially here, and the most able to do whatever I want to do, whether it sounds good or whether it doesn't sound good or whether people like it or they don't, you know? Um, it's all like a working process. I mean, you surround yourself with people that have that same goal and that same drive and that same creative passion, then you, get to make something amazing so that's kind of where I feel like the most free and most creative not necessarily the stage the stage I get so scared like <laughs> very nervous but in like a studio or like just like a, a like a living room with my friends and we're making music that's where I feel the most safe I love that and I and I think it kind of it's this idea of maybe just being allowed to fail freely is where you can be your most creative. Um, yeah. Because ultimately trial and error is, you know, that that is required in all creative processes. It's just in some, it might be stigmatized and in others it may not, you know. Um, and then you did that other things as well. Like I used to just provide like the vocals and stuff. But like sometimes I'd, I'd, I'd come up with a beat to add like additionally, so I realized, you know what, I could actually do some producing work and I actually I'm quite good at producing as well. Like I used to make beats as well. Like, like discover that you're actually good at something else, but if you don't have those people around you telling you, yo, oh, let's try this, you, you don't feel like you can reach that creative goal. So I feel like it's also important to surround just that same drive as you. Um, there's a comment as well um, by Amira. Um, I'm not present working, but I feel for me when I'm surrounded by like-minded people, just like Sabah saying, and be by supportive and genuine selves. 
Um, I think that's like a theme as well through this last couple of sessions with the motivation and with uh, the spiritual session that the people you surround yourself with have a very big influence on on your life and on your future and when you surround yourself with people who are have a similar energy and a, and a positive vibe and are curious and and want to better themselves and want to test new things and it, you, you're, you're not afraid to fail and they're not afraid to fail and they can help create a safe space um, I think that's a place where positivity really does thrive uh, pos- creativity really does does thrive um, yeah anyone else wants to add to the um, question Lisa? Hey, yeah. Um, I think we can move on to the um so we can maybe move on to the next bit so so when do people when is when when do you find and this is different for everyone but when you are the most creative when do you feel like that moment is so the meditation earlier tried to get you guys to channel and think of like where you're like where you found yourself being most creative. Could you guys share that? Um, I mean, it's not a specific like place or, um, or time of day or time of year. I just find that when I don't have any like stresses for example academically and stuff like that when you when you feel like you're free and it's very low pressure and you can do just what you enjoy I think that's when I feel the most free like waiting for a deadline or kind of having pressure on you I think that kind of stifles creativity a little bit that's that's very interesting because for me I was actually going to say the opposite um like for me it's actually when I feel really stressed out or it's too much going on um, in life in general. That's when uh, I'd be like, yes, now I want to do something new, like make a new drawing or something. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's actually the complete opposite to, uh, to uh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't see who said that, but who just said that. Um, yeah, like I said, for me, it's kind of therapeutic. So whenever it's too stress. Uh, too stressful or too much going on I'll just try to change what's going on and start making something to kind of release the stress so yeah that's interesting for me yeah I feel like it's definitely like a catch-22 for me because sometimes uh things in life that induce stress for me like I need to like write and you know do my poetry to kind of get me out of that headspace. But also when I'm just too, like I'm really bombarded with like life's like constant like hackling, it makes it really difficult for me to sit down and really just like, I for me, I need things to be very, very quiet. I I have a lot of friends that like can write poetry or write in general. It doesn't matter like what's going on around them. Like you can be very noisy. For me, if it's not really quiet, especially since like I'm back at my parents' house right now, it's really just like, it's been really difficult because, you know, there's a constant moving around the house. But back when I was in my own place, I felt like that's when I wrote a lot of my poetry because I was able to just kind of like tune everything out and work. And so, yeah, I think it's definitely a mixed bag. It depends. But I can, I can kind of feel a sentiment of both. Yeah, I'm similar to that. Like being... It depends on what type of creativity. Sometimes I can be really creative after 12 a.m., like really late at night when every, like the whole house is extremely quiet for some reason, that's when I decide, all right, let me get up and just write this, it's in my head, can't get it out. Um, And then sometimes if I need to like write an essay or whatnot, I can't do it unless I'm in a space that has a lot of people around but I can have my headphones in and as long as like, I can't hear them but I can see them around me that I'm good, I can just write as much as I want. So I think it does, it does, it's very different for everyone. And I don't think 
a lot of the time there's just one instance when you're able to do it you can it comes in its it comes in its waves sometimes at least for me it does yeah listening yeah. to you guys is yeah go ahead go ahead Fadali. Yeah, no, listening to you guys' answers just made me think that, yeah, but like, when you reflect on it, it is, it does kind of come in waves. Like when you, when I initially thought of it, I thought of free times in terms of academics, but like uh, someone else here mentioned, sometimes when it is, uh, when everything else does become stressful, you do kind of um, find an outlet to do that. And so I just think, like you said, um, that it comes in waves. I think it's interesting. I'm the complete opposite of all of you. I produce my best work under like pressure. <laughs> um, so I literally am like so relaxed. I think it's very bad. But the minute something is due <laughs> is when I stress and I'm like, okay, let me get my shit together and go. Um, I've never ever like in my university days, I've never ever submitted anything like like I never finished an assignment two days beforehand. You know how there's people who like can map out their whole week to finish things and what? Nope, not me. <laughs> I will be that person who will bring it the last five minutes of the lecture or just catch the prop outside to, <laughs> to submit something or like in terms of anything really, I'm just, I take life too relaxing and it's really bad because I know it's gonna, it's gonna catch up to me one day, but yeah. um so i think we've got we've got maybe some questions just to keep in mind and i'd say unless um anyone has any kind of burning um thoughts but you kind of, some people started to mention it but you know it's kind of starting to think about how are you standing in your own way in terms of when it comes to your creativity like what barriers have you created um uh, amira sort of mentioned perfectionism that happens a lot um, some t like <laughs> actually um, I'm going to expose myself here but a colleague of mine said to me he said because he has a similar issue he said what would make you start sooner right and so he said is it that and for him he said there's two scenarios sometimes it's either that the um, I think that the, like the work doesn't seem interesting or challenging so then you're like ah you know I can do it later you know, or you're just, you're like, it's too boring to do now, right? And then the other side is, it seems really difficult and you've turned it into this huge insurmountable task. And you're like, ah, oh, I couldn't possibly break that down into little chunks. So then you just go, I'm going to put that off to later. Um, so it kind of, it's still, it's still in my head. Um, but yeah, so, you know, how are you standing in your way? What barriers have you created? And then what, I guess this one is, what makes you feel like you are not a creative um and yeah that's just that's just one to think on if anyone has anything to say um jump in otherwise we'll move on to the um the writing prompts um i was gonna say i think for me it's it's um, it's really dangerous when you compare you try to compare yourself to others who are like doing something similar. And when, when I see that, I'd be like, wow, these guys, like, mashallah, they're doing an amazing job. Like, I'm nothing compared to that. Well, it's, it's um, yeah, I feel like I just, I just try to compare myself to other that kind of makes me feel like I'm not creative in that level and maybe not creative. Um, yeah I think that's an interesting one and even like what you were saying before about it being sort of process based is that you know it's like when somebody posts something on Instagram like okay sometimes they might show like a behind or like the making of of the of the product or the post but even then you don't know the sum total of hours that took them to be able to do that not for that specific post but just the whole skill the whole their whole creative journey so i think um mm. yeah everyone's journey is is unique and we can't we can't necessarily spend too much time like comparing ourselves um but yeah thanks thanks for adding that 
Um, okay, so I think we're now into the sort of the more of the free writing prompts. We've got uh, a few, hopefully we can get as, through as many as possible. But um, yeah, just really don't, um, don't overthink, don't restrict yourself. Just try and let the pen, you know, flow freely. Um, and yeah, let's get into it. So I think we're gonna get, um, we're gonna have three minutes per question. And uh, Lat has just sent the first, I think four. Um, no, those aren't the ones, I'm gonna send them right no. now though. Okay, yeah, so sure. just can just send one at a time, I think. Yeah. Just so right. that people don't. Um, but those are the, I think those were the ones that we've just uh, discussed, if you ever want to look over them. Um, and then, yeah, we've got the first prompt. Um, okay. The first one is two questions. Should I just, should I put all of it or should I just put the... Yeah, put it, put both in, yeah. Okay. All right, guys, ready? You've got three minutes. Go. Set the time emoji. <laughs> so what was the last thing that made you come alive? And do you believe there is something you're meant to do on earth? All right. 
<clears throat> oh, don't start again. <laughs> um, okay, so anybody, anybody want to share anything they've written? Doesn't have to be the whole thing. Maybe just a little extract or like a you know point. I'll share. Um, so the last thing that made me feel alive was um, simply laughing with my brothers last night. And we haven't laughed like that for the first time in a long time. And I can't even remember what we were laughing about, but I just remember the moment, like right before we were set out laughing to the moment where we were just dying of laughter. Um, so yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the last thing that made me feel alive. Um, and as for, um, do you believe there is something you're meant to do on earth? Oh, I was thinking hard on that, but I came to the conclusion that I meant to uplift others and just help them be happy with who they are and accept themselves. And yeah, give a little love to them. I love that, it's amazing. Um, thank you for sharing. Anybody else want to share? Um, any of the, I think we've got a few people who haven't, um, we didn't get to, didn't introduce themselves earlier. Um, if you feel like chiming in now or we can come back to you later. Um, I do want to share from Amira. She said something I realized while writing about the last thing that made me come alive. And I don't know if anyone else can relate is when I'm most present. Like all the moments that I remembered was when I was in the moment. So thank you for the prompt. Yeah, so being in the moment, that's very true. It happens a lot more than we sometimes realize. <laughs> that's a beautiful point. Yeah. Um, okay, well, uh, we can move on to the, to the next prompt. Um, and so I guess this is kind of where we link back to um, the meditation at the beginning. And this is um, right of a time you felt stuck creatively. So I'll put that in the chat and then we'll get another three minutes going. Say the do 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 do. <laughs> what's, what's that? That countdown. Oh my god, Jeopardy! There you go. Thank you. <laughs> do 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 do. Da 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 da. da. <laughs> Put this down. I mean, it's it's not a show I know, but I mean, you we're gonna go. Huh? I feel like UK people just don't know what's going on. No, 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 no. To hate on to hate on UK people real quick. Okay. All your chest. The UK deserves it all. <laughs> Every person I've been with um doing live stuff on they always have very bad internet. Yeah, always no I'm joking. <laughs> Y'all's internet is always basura, just always just super trash. Just wow. like I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I have to say it, I have to say it. It's true. I'm joking. Um. I'll love, I'll love, I'll love. I can't lie, Moji is the only UK person that has yet to show us bad internet. Well, like, mashallah. That's just a question. But not mashallah. I like, y'all need to figure out what provider he's with. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you with? Are you in Sky? Uh, we're, we're with Virgin Media, but genuinely, oh, like, we had to, we had to get, like, huh? I don't think I like it. acting up. <laughs> all right, all right. Back to the front, back to the front. <laughs> Three minutes, uh, go. <laughs> Sounds like Bridgerton music. Doesn't ring any bells. 
To anyone just to refresh, those of us who us, we are working on writing prompts. So there is a prompt in the caption box, uh, in the chat box, sorry. Uh, so yeah, we've got three minutes to answer those questions. Okay, pens down. Um, anybody, anybody who wants to share? I can start. Probably. Okay, so I don't know. I feel like mine's a little bit not silly, but it's just not very, very serious. Um, but for me, like every time I have like my group of friends so every time I go out and we do something nice for someone or like a birthday surprise or something I'm always the one that like collects all the videos and makes it into something like a, a timepiece video or something like fun that we can all look back on with like music in the background and all of that and so we had the birthday like two days ago and like everyone was like expecting me to make so much flames and stuff they're like oh my god so I'm so excited for the video it's gonna be 10 out of 10. Tell me why I'm stuck there on the videos for like at two days straight, like, what do I do with this? How do I put it together? <laughs> How do I make the music flow? Um, and like, it was something that was like frustrating me because I always do it and it always turns out good. So I'm always like, why can't I do it? And what's the big difference between me doing it now and doing it like a couple months ago, you know? Um, and also I had like expectations for everyone else, you know, they're like, so where's the video? Like we've been waiting for this for so long. Like, this is like the main thing that we do because we collect all our videos and then watch them at the end of the year. Um, and so it was just one thing, like I'm, I'm still stuck in this creative phase and it's, it's really frustrating me because like you have people having expectations at the same time. 
Um, and then when I thought about it just now, I was like, I haven't really experienced that with like singing and making music because I don't feel like I have people having expectations. Like I make music for myself. I haven't released any songs, I haven't released like any beats or anything like that. It's just for me and my friends to enjoy um, like a small group of people. And that's when I realized like, I don't really feel the pressure when it's um, just something for me that makes me happy versus something that's gonna, you know, affect other people and be something that they wanna watch. So that's when I felt really stuck creatively. And I realized that's usually when I feel stuck creatively It's when it's supposed to be for other people and not for me. I don't know if everyone, anyone feels like that, but that was it. I'm still stuck in it all. I have no idea what to do, but hopefully <laughs> after this session, I'll be able to resume and, you know, um, create something that I wanted to create. Thank, thank you for sharing. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a that's a tough one. It's a very tough one. Um, people's expectations, yeah, they can definitely get in the way. Um, I guess, if, like, how much have you tried to remove those expectations and just like, do you still enjoy making videos or? I did, and then I got stuck in this like bubble, right? Like I, I didn't know what to do. So I was, it was feeling like a chore. So I left it for like a whole day. I was like, let me not go back to this. Um, Cause it's stressing me out. And it's usually something fun that I really like doing. Um, and it was the first time where something fun that I liked doing kind of made me feel like really, really stressed out. Like it's a small, it's not a huge thing I need to be stressed out about, but because I just had like everyone going like, yo, when's this coming out? Like, you want to see the video, blah, blah, blah. Um, like I just I was like okay let me take a little detour and try and ground myself do something else for a while and then I'll come back to it when I have my creativeness back mm -hmm. anyone yeah, anyone I really relate to that. Oh, sorry go ahead who was that Zina, go. no I was just saying I could definitely re Allah, he relate to that to a crazy extent especially I feel like I'm always a person that goes against the green and whenever like someone tells me to do something, I don't want to do it even more. Like when the mom was like, I'm like, dang, bro, I'm really not doing it now. And it's just like, it's just like, for me, it's like when I was starting to publish my work, like when I got my first deadline, I was just like, yo, I'm really not doing this. And that's exactly what happened because I had that negative mindset of like, I'm not going to get it done. And because I just don't work well under like, like, you know, like constrictions. And so, I, I actually didn't and it took me actually like a month after to like like get through the motions of like publishing so subhanAllah it's just like I feel like the, although I say this and I am always like I always say I'm 97% stuck 3% lucid because it's it's actually the moments that that I'm unstuck that actually kind of make it worthwhile whenever I am sorry it's the moments that I am stuck that make it worthwhile whenever I am unstuck so even though I am st stuck a lot of time, it's just, it makes it all worthwhile for those small moments or those small sliver of the nights where I actually get work done and I'm design it. And it feels, it, it comes all around circle. Yeah. I think um, I'm gonna reference back to the motivation talk, but what you just said. Um, we have like one thing that I think gets us stuck in this pattern is we don't celebrate all those small moments. So even if you get a line done and you think that line is fire, like you are just like so proud of yourself that you got that line, celebrate it. Like be encouraged and feel like, yo, I managed to just push past this point because I was stuck in it. Uh, and celebrate all the small moments just as much as you would celebrate the big moments. Um, and then I think that, that kind of helps in terms of making things look less daunting. And it's like, all right, I just do this and it means I've done this. And um, one other point they made was uh, your journey between A and B shouldn't mean that it's just between A and B. There's every, there's all these little increments in the middle that you should always look at every increment as one step further away from where you are rather than, step, than one step closer to where you are. It's kind of where your point A was a week ago is not where it is right now. Um, so celebrating those small moments. And I think that applies in everything. I think 
even when it comes to create, being creative, whether you're writing a song or you're writing a poem or in my case, designing, um, trying to design a building or get an idea for a building, like a, the big end picture always looks so daunting because you don't know how it's going to look like. You just have, you don't, you have an idea of it, but not always does the way we want it to be always turn out the way it is. Sometimes it turns out a lot better. Um, I think Mr. G. Salah has said, you can definitely uh, attest to, to that creative block and creative kid. Just put him on the spotlight, give him a little bit of time to marinate to the group. <laughs> um, uh, I wanted to pick on some people who haven't talked. So we'll leave. I don't know if you've got anything share we'd love to hear hey assalamu everyone i i just want to say i've been enjoying i joined late uh and i love where the conversation going i do have a question about how did you unstuck from that mindset and the, did you have to face the same situation of kind of getting into a place that is kind of have constraints and you had to navigate through it or what was, what was the shift that allowed you to kind of face it? And if you had to face it again, what would you do differently? How about we have Jihad introduce himself and answer the question? <laughs> that, that was some short marination. <laughs> I think Jihad's probably still connecting. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Zoom be messing up sometimes. Um, so your your question was, yeah, how did you how did you become unstuck? Um, that's a really hard question. I'm trying to think of a time. I've got one one way um, that I think someone did mention earlier. Uh, uh, when you look at a task, you tend to look at the big picture. And the big picture is always really scary because to get from where you are to the end is really difficult sometimes. Um, so one way I like to like my design process um, when I'm trying to design something, I always put like a checklist and so I break that big end goal into like 10 small goals 20 small goals and I I have learned that putting a date between for each checklist doesn't always work um just putting but maybe creating it as a milestone really helps so if I'm trying to get a drawing done I will put a checklist that I have a concept for it that I have like a precedent for it that I've researched like structural stuff for it and those are all like my little checkpoints um and then I literally take them off as like oh I like cross them out it's the most satisfying thing like when you've done and you've crossed out and you've done. um so that helps um sometimes and I think a lot of the time it really is the, the space that you're in um sometimes when you are in the same space every day trying to do the same thing um it's like the definition of madness, right? So it's like, okay, I'm, I'm one day I'm able to do it, but like the next consecutive days I'm not able to. So change your space and your settings and changing your um, surrounding the activities that you're doing throughout the day so that when you come back to it, you have a kind of fresh outlook. Um, G's here. <laughs> Sorry, hey, Jad. I don't know if you have a question. What's up? What's up? How's everybody? Um, What's up, everybody? I hope y'all doing well. I'm sorry I'm, I'm a little late. I just got off work right now. But I hope uh, this session has been going well. Um, and I'm tuned in. So there was a question from Walid about how do you kind of overcome creative barriers? So what do you do when you feel like you're in like that space and you are trying to get out of that space to accomplish a set target or a goal? It's a great question. So um, 
I get in blocks a lot. Like I personally, whenever I'm in a block, um, I do different things. Like sometimes I'll try to take some time away uh, from what I'm doing and I'll take a second and be like, cause once I get myself into a block, I'm usually like, if I keep trying to force something, I'm usually blocking myself even more, if that makes sense. So I'm usually trying to uh, to take a I take a, like a like a break away, or like and this is something I do throughout my creative process too. Like I'll if I'm um, uh, creating, if I'm cre- if I'm like writing for, I don't know, like an hour goes by and I start feeling like the creates the creative energy slowing down. I'll get up and do something else. Like I'll go um, make some tea, you know, or just get up or just change my like position. There's like a whole science to it actually, but changing your position when you're uh, creating actually like increases your creative energy and like helps you be more creative. So something I'll do is I'll step away from it and I'll do something else and then I'll come back to it. Sometimes though, I'll get in blocks where, um, they're I'm blocked for a long time um and like long time meaning like sometimes like months at a time and when that happens uh which it happened last year for a while and I, I felt like I was blocked for like three or four months and I actually got this book that I'm going to recommend to everyone it's called The Artist's Way by Julia Campbell um and I could type it in here uh, as soon as I'm, I'm done but um that book was was really uh, valuable to me and like eye opening because it suggested that instead of avoiding it, you actually confront it and you you it, it does basically like takes you through this this like course almost like chapter by chapter of things you can do. So two of the things that they say to do every single day and not to miss one is um, uh, writing morning pages. So waking up every single day and writing three pages of just an unconscious stream of thought. Like literally, it could be like, I'm wearing a white shirt right now. I'm sitting down in a chair, the wall is white, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then soon enough, the more you're writing and the more you just let that free flow, the more substance that you get out of that. You know what I mean? So, um, So that's something that I started doing whenever I get blocked is instead of, immediately trying to create maybe I step away from it and then do that instead of avoiding it and I think avoiding it is what got me blocked for for months at a time so so yeah that's what I do oh the second thing <laughs> that it says to do <laughs> is weekly it says to um to take yourself on something called an artist date so to take your to do something um creative with yourself other than create, if that makes sense. Like go on a walk in nature somewhere or go paint, go to a a painting session or go watch a movie or go watch a play or go to a concert, something like that. So um, yeah, so I tried to employ those in my life and it's it's helped me a lot. Uh, So that's what I do when I'm blocked. Hope that helps. Something that I definitely just wanted to add and I resonate with, sometimes we're so overwhelmed by the idea of being so overwhelmed that we overwhelm ourselves from even ensuing the process. And that, that have at least for me personally, that happens to me so much. That definitely resonates with me. <laughs> That's facts. Um, so I think we're gonna we're gonna go on to um we've got a couple of more prompts um and i think we're gonna yeah we're gonna do these two kind of together and maybe give you slightly more time but not not too much um and this is kind of where the discussion went anyway but the first question is um i'll i'll put, put it in the chat box again but um right over time you were in deep flow uh and then the second question is you know Contrasting the two experience, the two experiences, the one of being stuck and the one of being deep flow, how could you transition from 
like being stuck to being in flow and that's i guess a question to ask yourself um so i'll put those in the chat box and give you say four or five minutes <laughs>
Okay, guys. Um, just I think we are rapidly. Um, yeah, we've got we've got a rapid fire round for you guys. Um, and yeah, we've got, we're going to say a few questions, and then we're going to give you probably under thirty seconds, and it's just you know write four or five words down, um, and that's it really. So, um, yeah, let's get let's get into it. I mean, what do your wildest dreams look like? That's number one. It's a thirty-second timer. Enjoy your time. Yet. Okay. Next question is, what does it mean to speak your truth? Um, and again, just to jot down four or five words. Next question, what are the greatest things that have inspired you? Or, you know, what inspires you the most? Next question, what are the principles and laws you live by? What is your favorite? And the last one, which is what do you envision for yourself on this creative journey? going to give you uh, 30 more seconds just to kind of wrap up those questions. They're all in the chat. 
Thank you for coming, Umloda. Uh, okay, so we're going to give you about uh, a minute to just go over. We have to look at the words that you've, you know, the things that you've written for all of these answers, including the uh, the free writing prompts. Um, particularly, you know, this idea of going from stuck to being in flow um, and all of these things that all of these uh, quick fire rounds that we just said. Um, and I guess just, yeah, highlight sort of some of the key words or the words that resonate with you a lot. Um, And the final question of the evening um, is being authentic to yourself and vision, what would your mantra be? And hopefully this is something that, you know, will give you a one or two minutes. You don't have to completely have polished it, but if you start getting at it, then, you know, hopefully this is something that you can look back at, you know, when you're stuck or when you want to create a piece of work and you're thinking, what is actually my mantra when I go and create stuff? And use the words that you have written down as a form of inspiration. Um, those words like that you've chosen specifically with those questions, they hopefully will kind of be like an overview of your creative process um, and how you um, see yourself as a creative and as someone who enjoys um, that form of creativity.
Okay. Um, that was that was the last question, um, and hopefully you're starting to form a a mantra. Um, and we'd love to hear from anyone that feels comfortable or confident enough to, to go ahead and see what they put, what they've started with. Zina, you, you're looking pretty confident. Thank you for putting me on the spot. Um, <laughs> but I'll just, I'll just say what I wrote. I said, it doesn't, it does not have to be perfect. It has to be me. It doesn't have to be perfect. Your work is valuable. You're not a single drop in the ocean, but you are the ocean in a single drop. Um, uh, you encompass everything. Um, and again, you don't have to be perfect, but you. That's just, that seems like a very long one. <laughs> yeah. It's so cute. Love I love it. it. We love it. Yeah. That's something I would stick up on my mirror, like a daily reminder. <laughs> Yeah, let me get that. I'm going to print that out. <laughs> uh, mine is similar. Uh, mine is be free being you. Like, I like yeah. it short, short and packed a punch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of the words that I've met. Oh, am I on mute? Oh. <laughs> no, yeah, some of the words that I mentioned when I was lying down. Um, there was a lot of like um, expressing yourself and like being confident. So um, yeah, I just came up with express your art with confidence and claim it. That's it. Really nice. My change though. Um. So I have like a really similar one to what Zena said. I just wrote it doesn't have to be perfect because I really struggle with perfectionism, I guess. That's a powerful one. That is a very powerful one. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, thank you. Um, I think mine kind of echoes the rest of you guys. As I said, create what inspires you have fun with it and share. Um, so yeah. I love that. Just love that. Heather, coming to you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so um, mine is basically do what makes you happy. And if what you're doing isn't satisfying you, but it's to satisfy someone else, then you should rethink what your, your purpose is. Do what makes you happy. Beautiful. Nice. Uh, Love that. Yeah. Um, and then Amira had, I am confident and capable. Anything I create is worthy. That's mine. That's a really great one. Love that. Um, Rowan, you kill the last one. Mine's pretty short. It's just um, allow yourself to be. Beautiful. Sorry. Did you guys write? No. I didn't. Right. I didn't. Right. <laughs> yeah, Nafisa, we want to hear from you, Muhammad Jafar. And... My always yeah. has mentors. I just can't remember some uh, quotes. <laughs> I, I go by like you are your biggest hater, but also your biggest supporter. So don't let yourself, don't hold yourself back. Did you just write that? Yeah. Come on, that's oh, just Google that. So right there, see. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. That's nice, mashallah. Yeah. Moji, if you do yours, I'll do mine. I, I'm, I'd literally be spitballing. Um, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess allow yourself to fail. Um, always enjoy it. Embrace the process. 
and love what you do. Yeah, that's a great um, nice. would be embrace the journey, never give up. The end goal isn't the goal, but the starting point will get you there. And Stop goal. Googling, Adam. I didn't know. <laughs> Where did I <laughs> Uh, so guys this was amazing this whole session was designed to just kind of get you out of that comfort zone um and uh push past some of the barriers but i think more so than anything it was kind of like a group therapy and trying to realize that you know what a lot of people are in the same boat and it's okay to be in that boat it's not an everlasting boat it's just it's a process that you have to go through um so i wanted to say that this session and this mantra that you have right now hold on to it frame it if you need to but look at it every morning look at it as a source of sort of motivation not necessarily inspiration but it's motivation to allow you to be inspired and um for the next three sessions though that mantra is hopefully going to play a part in the work that you develop in the breakout rooms. Um, so I don't know if G or Moji or you also want to talk about the next few sessions, but I want to open it up to them to, to, to give everyone a little bit of insight on what happens next. Yeah, so um, we've got on Saturday, we've got an IG live um, starting at 4 p.m. GMT. Inshallah. And we've got some amazing guests. And essentially, we're going to be asking them some of these same questions we've uh, asked you. So, you know, what gets your creative juices flowing? How do you get over creative blocks? Um, and really, the idea was that, you know, you can potentially take notes from them, but also, you've already done the exercise for yourself. So you kind of you know, you're able to, to almost compare the notes. Um, and yeah, we, you know, just going to talk to them and see, and see, see how much we can learn from them as well. But you can ask questions as well to them. Um, some of them have done some incredible work in the Sudan community. Um, we're very excited for who's going to be on. Um, they've, yeah, they've done some incredible poetry, music, artwork, um, it's like uh, journalism so like we said it's not just one form of art it's going to be a variety of different artworks and everyone has their process everyone has their flow and their setbacks and it's always beautiful to be able to see um, someone in a position where you hope to be at some point um, so hopefully that will be a good kickstart or push you even further into our third session next Wednesday. Um, G, would you like to talk about that session? So our session next Wednesday um, is gonna be our breakout session. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm right? Yes, you're right. Because <laughs> uh, I was getting a blank stare. Um, so our breakout session is gonna be um, uh, pretty much we're going to break up into rooms and we'll have special guests in each one of those rooms as well based on um, what your creative passion is. Uh, so we'll have like different categories that you can break out into and kind of get this insight uh, in like in a more intimate and, and close way uh, from people who are doing uh, other artists uh, who are who are um, offering their time to, you know, share their insight and let you into their processes um so uh and also you know people who have done amazing things in the Sudanese community and just in their own right uh through their art so uh so that's going to be on uh the during the breakout session i want to say um i don't know should we give them a teaser of who some of the guests are um let's see okay after the spotlight if musa would you like to speak about the final session uh isn't the final session of the spotlight yes oh, okay. I just, yeah 
Um, but so like last year, it's a, it's a chance for um, anyone who's worked on their own creativity throughout Ramadan or in general want to just showcase what they have done, um, whether it's your art pieces, um, like your visual art pieces, we can share that on our Instagram story as well as our page. Um, and if you wrote a poem, a song or anything like that, and you want to share that as well, it's your time to shine. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that will be on Instagram Live, I think. I don't know if we finalized that one. It was either Instagram Live or Clubhouse. Um, but all of these sessions will have a reflection. So on Saturday, after our guests, we will have, uh, it will be on Instagram Live. And then in the evening, we will have a second session and we will switch to Clubhouse. And we're hoping to have a large discussion um Sudanese not Sudanese but all about the creative process and about getting in touch with your creativity um and how we can utilize this time of Ramadan and in lockdown um to cleanse reset and revive that part of our lives um G Moji Musa I don't know if there's anything else I've next no I think that's pretty much it. Um, I think um, I would recommend to people to approach these sessions with an open mind, approach these sessions with, um, uh, allow yourself to be free. A lot of us talk about being free in our art, so allow yourself to be free in this. And also, we're not gonna put you on the spot or anything, you know, uh, in terms of sharing your art. So uh, feel free to do anything uh, feel free to join and, and know that you're not going to be put on the spot and be able to do things behind the scenes. But if you do want to share, um, then feel free to uh, join in. Um, and we have a lot of a lot of cool people joining in and a lot of different artists who, you know, it's it's going to be really cool just to hear about other people's different processes. And me as an artist, it's going to be cool to just hear about other people's processes and how they do things um, and share my own. So I'm excited. And I'm sure um, it's going to be an he's amazing. Got, he's got a few special friends joining. So that's going to be really cool to see <laughs> how they vibe off each other. Um, yeah, I think we are good on the time as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this session. Um, and I hope you have taken away some valuable tips and inspiration. And yeah, everybody's a creative. We've all got creativity in us, so I never forget that. And yeah, I don't have anything else to say if anyone wants to close up. No, just, thank yeah, thank you, you all so much thank you. for contributing. Thank you so yeah, thank you guys for hosting this. This was amazing. And uh, gee, I love the shirt. Yes. <laughs> Always right for the motherland. <laughs> Always repping, bro. I hope everyone here tries to perform or submit a piece for the spotlight session. We love that. Let and light. yeah, and before we forget, so we do have our active fundraiser, and then we have an official fundraiser coming out. Um, I want to say next week, but don't hold me to it, but it's linked to our active fundraiser. But right now we have a project called the Hope Project and it is with Villa Heart and the orphanages. So please check that out on the Instagram page, share, donate, like, comment, the whole shebang. Um, they're doing some incredible work and all of our sessions are tied towards um, the children of Sudan. So we are hoping that we inspire and uh, create something special um and if you want to be on the ramadan mana series and take over the account please do <laughs> uh, we'd love to see it done in your area so just let us know thank you guys so much for this wonderful session it was my first but uh alhamdulillah i learned so much and um thank you all for sharing your infinite gems and inshallah until next time i'm gonna go thank you zina Allah, thanks again. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Yes, Bye. thank you very much. See you guys. Thanks yeah. for joining. Masalama. See you. Masalama. You had. Um,
quote SDM peeps. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, Y'all, that was amazing. Yeah, Michelle, that was amazing. Y'all got me, y'all got me off bed. You know, I was the lights were off. I was <laughs> asleep and then Muhammad Jeff was like, put your camera on. <laughs> Some people didn't listen. <laughs> oh man. But now it was worth it, definitely. I'm glad I got up and got the book. Yeah. yeah. I think we had a I think I think we had around 17 people, so it was okay. Um I suppose just how we maximize that for the breakout rooms is going to be the next task. Yeah, yeah. Because if it's seven, if it's the same amount as this time, I don't think we can mm -hmm. have this. Might just be split into two rooms. Um, yeah, it might be oh, writing yeah. versus everything else. Yeah, like anything that's written. So like songwriting, storytelling, poetry in one room, and then. Yeah. Else. I feel like all of them were writers, though. So yeah. All right. Well. Zoom. Hmm. Okay. I just feel like everyone hates Zoom. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Right. But like, you can't do it on IG. Like, we couldn't have had discussions. It would have just been us four on IG, just talking to like the empty space. No. The thing is, though, I also think on Instagram Live, people would not hesitate to jump on if you tell them to jump on, especially with the viewership that's been happening. So if some, like, say, for example, like, it's you and Jihad on live, um, and you guys, like, tell people, hey, if you want to join and share something, yes. like, share how, blah, 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 I think people would take that opportunity, too. Because even when we were doing the live together, I seen a lot of people requesting to join the live who weren't. Uh, really yeah yeah okay yeah i think the oh. spotlight should be on ig live yeah for, i definitely don't think it should be on clubhouse yeah i don't think it should be on clubhouse i think it should be on ig live i know the reflection for saturday is on clubhouse but it's after the ig live section um we're gonna get, just, we're yeah. gonna get some some stray cats from that clubhouse discussion i can just tell I know, but you know what? Like I couple, already know who I'm couple. blocking. I already know who I'm blocking. Is it Y dot? No. Um, Why dot isn't an issue. No, Teddy one. He's the first one, and then um, Nubian King. I've already blocked. I've already the hell is that Nubian King? Because he said some crazy stuff. Yeah, and he always comes in and says really crazy stuff. Um, um... You know, from day one, I used to always say, I don't know why anyone gives Nubian King the time of day, like. I love yeah. it's very interesting to see people get work. I don't know. I think I'm just naturally the type of person who's like, I, like, I don't let anyone, like, I don't get work.